And then tell your neighbor, say, you're stronger than you know. Now tell yourself, say, I am stronger than I know. Say, but I'm going to find out. Amen. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 12. And, um, you know, I know some of you are facing situations, and I know some of you have faced situations where it's just been an impossible situation. There's no ways the money's coming through. The divorce is final. The papers are in the judge's hands. Um, you know, um, they come in and put in locks on your doors. And uh, your kids just are not coming home and you don't know where they are. And the sickness is really, they've told you it's just incurable. And all kinds of crazy things happen. Now, we live in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen? The Bible says that the just shall live by that means I live by not what I see, but by what He says. Amen. Amen. And being in this world, living in a natural world, it's very difficult sometimes to differentiate and to live in faith when you see things happening around you. But you have to disassociate with what's happening around you and then associate with what God has said about the Word. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. All right. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 8. It says, concerning this thing... And this is Paul talking about a thorn he had in his flesh where Satan had been sent to buffet him. And it says, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. So he said, God help me, God help me, God help me. Have any of you ever been in that place? You know, sometimes that's the best prayer. You know what the best prayer is? Help! Because it's saying with a real heart. You understand what I'm saying? Desperation. And you cry out for help, God hears that kind of a prayer. But when you sit there and thus serve the Lord, I cometh to thy this day, of fathereth. And I ask if that you would meeteth my needeth. You're praying with yourself. <laughs> Amen. Don't put on, pray who you are. Pray who you are. Don't be one place, one person, you know, in front of people, then another person at home. Pray who you are. And if you feel... This is my prayer for the day. Help! Pray it. God will answer that prayer. Before He'll answer any other prayer. That's not with a pure heart. Can you say amen? All right. So He says, yeah, help me, help me, help me. So He asked God three times. This is obviously a problem in His life. And look what God says to Him. And God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. I mean, think about that. Help, help, help. My grace is sufficient for you. So in other words, what God is saying here, He's saying that my grace has got enough power to overcome the problem that you're facing. Amen. Is that not what He's saying? Because if He's asking for help and He says, Oh, just walketh in love. He didn't say that. He said, my grace is sufficient for the problem that's in your life. So straight away you've got to recognize that God's grace is sufficient for any problem that you might be facing in your life. Any problem. Can you say amen? amen. It could be no job. It could be no, Whatever. His grace is sufficient to back away and push away this mountain and this giant that sometimes comes into our lives. Can you say amen? amen. Now watch what he says. He doesn't finish there. He says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So if you think you're a big deal, you're going to stay weak. If you think you've got it going on, you're going to stay weak. Because His strength is made perfect, perfect in your weakness. When you recognize and realize that you are nothing without Him, then He becomes strong within you. Amen. Amen. He says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That's why when you scream, help, that's a weakness you're coming from. But you call into the right person, boom, He helps you. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. Amen. Your weakness of self. Now this is going to get good, so just hang on to your seatbelts, amen? But let me tell you this now. Those that are proud and arrogant and strong in their own eyes will not experience God's strength. Because they're proud. And a proud person, a proud person will never admit to being weak in any area. And so if you can't be weak in an area, then you can't be strong in that area. Ching, ching, ching. Did you get it? Let the pennies fall. Ching, ching, ching. Because if you think that you've got a good and you've got it going on and you, you're the big deal, then you're strong in that area, then you can't be helped in that area. Because you're not weak in that area. Amen. I want this to get into your spirits. I want you to click on to God. Amen. And so it's like an alcoholic or a drug addict. 
You see, until a drug addict or an alcoholic admits that they're a drug addict, addict or an alcoholic, there's no help for them. Now listen, he could admit this thing as a manipulator. I've seen people manipulate. Oh yes, I've got a problem. Will you help me? I've seen it. I've heard it. I've been there. Amen. It's a manipulator. And a manipulator will do anything to convince you that he's right. That is a proud person. So when a, a, a drug addict or an alcoholic or any kind of addict comes to you and they try to manipulate you into believing that they, they need help, when in actual fact they don't believe it in their own heart, they're going to stay weak and they will not receive help from the Lord God Almighty. Can you say amen? amen. Are you with me? Yes. Because until he says, oh, I'm weak, I can't do it, there's no help available for him. Amen? Like a person with unforgiveness or a person that's taken an offense towards somebody else. You've got to let that go. You've got to be weak in yourself. You see, a person in unforgiveness or a perf- person that has taken an offense is a person that's walking in pride because Proverbs 13, 10 says only by pride comes contention. Well, what did you say to me? I'm going to hold unforgiveness towards you. What did you say about me? I've got an offense towards you right now. You're being strong in your own self. And so there's no help for that person. Because he says in your weakness is my strength made perfect. Amen. So when you think you're the bee's knees and the cat's meow and all the rest of it, you are actually weak. Because you're weakening yourself. You're not going to be strong. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So until you realize, I am in trouble and I need your help because nothing else is going to help me, you'll stay weak. And there's no help for a proud person because a proud person is never wrong. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. And listen, it might be legitimate that someone spoke against you. And it might be legitimate that you have grounds to walk in unforgiveness Well, if that's the case, let me ask you this. Was it not legitimate that God had a case against us? But he walked in forgiveness towards us, didn't he? He wasn't offended by us. He chose us. And then he came and healed us and set us free and saved us. Amen. So if he could forgive us all of that stuff, don't you think we could forgive people of the things they do to us? Amen. Well, you don't know what they owe me. You know, next to what you owe God, it's nothing. Amen. Amen. And so, if you're in pride, there's no help for you. Tell your neighbor, say, if you're in pride, there's no help for you. Because a proud person will never admit to a weakness. How many of you know proud people? Now, don't show me your hand on the next one. How many of you is one? A proud person will never admit to needing help. So, therefore, you can't be in your weakness. His strength becomes perfect because you're too proud to admit you're weak. We put on airs and graces, don't we? And let me just say this. If you are handling your own problem because you're too proud, then you don't need God to handle your problem for you. If you are too proud to admit for help to God in the proper way and to anybody else, then you don't need God's help because you're handling your own problem. Does that make sense? It's going to get better, don't worry. So let's read again verse 9. It says, and he, God, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So here Paul gets a revelation. He says, woohoo! Therefore, I will boast in my weaknesses because when I admit to what I'm not, then he becomes what I am. Do you see that? Paul, the great man who got all the revelation and all the knowledge on on, on faith and all the stuff that he got on, he says, therefore I will rather boast in my weaknesses than in my strengths. 